Hey, Monica. Hey, Taria. Trying to get the glare out of y'all face. Yikes. How y'all doing? Well, somehow the light is different in here today. So, we got to try and fix it. Hey, Elder Jackman. Hey, Refinest Prophet. Hey, Sister Agnes. Hey, Pastor Hargrove. <laughs> hey, Sister Renee. Hey, Blessings and Miracles, Pastor Roger Kirksey from Mobile, Alabama. Mobile, Alabama. Is this your first time? Welcome, Pastor Gloria. We got to talk about um, you coming to Ebenezer and the River. Hey, Nisha. Hey, Pastor Will. Hey, Elder Rhonda. Thank you, Monica. Hey, Elder Lewis. Edgar Usher. Blessings to you. First time. Bless you. Amen. Welcome all my first time people. And certainly the keeping, keeping it moving Kim Possibles that are on the line. We are so grateful for you being here. Hey, Pastor Robin, I'm going to call you back. Give me a minute. Hey, Lori, chi -Town newbie. Bless you. Welcome. Bless you, Mrs. P.T. Mannings. Hey, Myra, I see y'all sharing. Share the scope, share the scope, share the scope. Amen. All the newbies. Thank you. Bless you, uh, Pastor John. I'm going to catch all y'all. I'm telling you, this Periscope Highway is getting so congested. I'll be trying to, to stay up to date. But listen, bless you, Overseer Daniels, Elder Nita, Minister Earl Washington from Philadelphia. Bless you, Minister Earl. Welcome. Welcome, Elder Virginia. Everybody, thank you for inviting your followers. Thank you for the hearts. I told you we're going to make that quarter of a million this week because we already at 230,000 hearts. That's before we started. And um, and and you like my shirt? Representing Tired of Playing Church, Pastor Derek Tyson coming to your city soon. Amen. So, yes, we were at 230,000 hearts. That's almost a quarter million. We're on our way. Amen. Okay, KSY, whatever. I don't know what that means. But as long as you behave yourself on here, you can stay. Or else we'll pray for you and some changes going to come to your life. Amen. Yep, I'm representing. So, also, um, I didn't set a goal for our family increase this, this um, week. So, it looks like we're going so fast. I can at least say we'll, we'll be at 700 followers by the end of this week. So, y'all help me by telling your um, people to follow. Bless you, Dr. Bowie. Bless you, Minister Barbie. Amen. Telling your followers to follow us. Um, we got some great scopes out here to follow, and I'm just grateful that people will consider mine uh, one worth following. Also, I meant to say to y'all, um, do you know? All right. Do you know that um, you can get the scopes at uh, catch.me? You can get them at catch.me. That's a website that they uh, the scopes, you can make your scopes automatically load to catch.me. And you don't have to load them. They just go there automatically and people can catch them after the 24 hours. Also, those of you that's keeping up with, with um, Periscope is moving so quickly that you see that they will also upload them to your Facebook page um, automatically if you uh, set your settings like that. So Periscope is going fast. It's a way for us to communicate the word of God. It's a way for us to, to just be family, just to kick back and, and help people feel better. The first person that I followed on, that's good, Elder Rhonda, the first person that I followed on Periscope, other than um, Pastor Robin Ware, I mean, Minister Robin Ware, who taught me about Periscope, you might as well say her and Bishop Luter had a webinar, and that's how I learned about Periscope. Um, but one of the first people I followed, and I don't even know how I followed him, his name was just Alan, and he was in California. He has over 70,000 followers, and all he does is sits there and just talk to people. Seem like they lonely or whatever. He doesn't have an agenda. He's a, a, a teacher and a police officer. And so we know that what we're trying to instill in the people 
uh, just people of God, people, period, is to help you live out your destiny and your purpose. Because I am a destiny and a purpose coach and a midwife and a mentor. Amen. And try to be a model. So today we're talking to you about watch those cravings as we continue in this series talking about expectation as it pertains to pregnancy, as it pertains to the strong desire um, that something is going to happen. But I, I'm more on comparing it with pregnancy in the natural than I have been to um, the strong desire that something is going to happen. And so what is a craving? What is it to crave? Uh, to crave is a powerful desire for something. To crave is to have a powerful desire for something to the point that you feel like you can't help it. I got to have this. I need this. And when you're pregnant in the natural, you think that if you get this thing, food usually, that it's going to make you feel better. And so we, I think about um, craving. I had a different craving with each kid, with Erica. It was hot peppers, jalapeno peppers, anything hot. I thought that made me feel better, even though many times it would cause physical challenges that hot things cause. Um, you just feel like you you get this, it's going to make you feel better. Um, with Derek, I think it was uh, pineapple, orange pineapple ice cream or peach ice cream. Um, and then you need that every day only to find out that these things also put weight on me. I had to go on a diet and all of these things. And so just because you crave it doesn't mean that it's going to make what you're trying to deliver, the process of you delivering your purpose and your destiny make you feel better. And so my, my admonishment to you today in the spirit is we must watch those cravings. Thank you for sharing, Pastor Robin. Y'all share, share the scope. Come on, I'm only going to be here for a minute. Keep the hearts coming. Listen, just like in morning sickness, the reason for um, cravings in pregnancy are not really known. They have some thoughts. They have some uh, ideas. But um, one thing they believe that is uh, connected to the hormonal changes. Remember, the hormonal changes uh, cause morning sickness. They think they're not even sure. And they're thinking that uh, the hormonal changes uh, intensify your, your sense of smell, your sense of taste. And, and causes you to have a very strong desire for certain foods and even behaviors that it gives you your, your hormonal changes. This, this, uh, the changes in your hormones, the, the hormones, your, your spiritual being, if you will, the shifts and, and trying to get your flesh to come under alignment with your spirit. You know, I'm giving you analogies here. Uh, it causes you to have some cravings because uh you know that when you get delivered from certain things uh you many times will take up some crave something else to take a place the place of what you were uh, desiring in the first place and so um you you uh get these cravings and you go through this thing of i just gotta have it sometimes it's cravings that you had prior to being pregnant Sometimes it's cravings for stuff that you never even liked before you got pregnant. And so in the, in the, in the spirit, now you're pregnant. You, you know, you have been pregnant with destiny. You know, God was calling you to push something out. And, and now you're desiring stuff that you didn't even desire before you got pregnant. And it, you have to question the craving. You got to watch the craving to say, do I really need this? Is this really going to make the process easier? Watch the cravings. Watch those cravings because sometimes those cravings are deceptive. Those appetites that you have when you're pregnant causes your appetites to be heightened. Your, your appetites are heightened during pregnancy. And so you got to be very, very careful in the spirit. When you have destiny and purpose, you have something that, that God is trying to get you through a process to push out. Your appetites become heightened even for things that you weren't uh, even craving or liked before you got pregnant. So here is my solution. Hey, Overseer Brown, here is my solution. And I always study just a little bit. I'm not an expert at pregnancy even. I just delivered three, so I know a little bit about it. But listen, that's the first thing you got to understand when you're pregnant with destiny and purpose. 
that your appetites are heightened more during that time than they are before you're in the process of pushing stuff out. So you can't run after every craving. You can't go after everything that you desire. You got to process it through the spirit, through the word. And, and here, it, here it is. Here's one thing that my second thing, and I'm done. One thing that is said in the natural concerning the pregnancy uh, and the cravings is that the mother has to allow her maternal instincts to supersede her cravings. In other words, she can be craving things like I was a gestational diabetic when I was pregnant. And it says when you're a digest gestational diabetic during pregnancy, it's because your body is not processing the sugar. Too much sugar can put you in a coma. But when you're a gestational diabetic, you crave more sugar. You crave more sugar. And the sugar is the very thing that's going to kill you or put you in a coma. So when I was a gestational diabetic, I had to say to myself that my craving for sugar, I had to let my maternal instinct say, my craving for sugar will not supersede my maternal instinct that the thing inside of me will suffer greatly if I go over into this craving. And so those of you that know me, that know that I was a gestational diabetic, I let my maternal instinct speak very strongly to the point that I followed the diet. I did not just say, oh, I want this. I want that. Go get me pickles. Go get me this. Go get me that. I can't say that in my first two pregnancies because I was not as strong and, and mature and knowledgeable as I was in my last pregnancy. But in that last pregnancy, I knew that as a diabetic, and this is even in, the, in regular diabetes, I can only have certain foods. And so if you could have 10, you could have French fries, but you could only have 10. And so my maternal instinct, though French fries is God's most perfect food. Hallelujah. I said 10 French fries. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. This is what I could have. And that's it. And if you were allowed to have a piece of fried chicken, but if you were, if you had that, you had to give up something else. So in other words, I had to watch my cravings. I had to be mindful of my cravings because the thing on the inside was more important to me than my strong craving or desire for appetites of things that were not necessarily good for me. So that's it. Bless you. Bless you, Dr. Bowie. Bless you, Sister Carol. Bless you, Kareem. We're going to have some safe deliveries. I'm telling you, there's some good things on the way. Y'all got some great things on the inside of you, and I want to be here to help you. Hey, Tom, I want to be here to help you to have a safe delivery. Thank you, men, for being a part of the scope, because although this is a seem like a feminine word, I'm telling you, destiny and purpose has no gender. So I'm getting ready to give on off, off of here. It is great. Hey, Tamani. Hey, oh, Janika 303. Get the replay. Get the replay. Bless you, uh, PB Campbell 321. Bless you, Chucky. Bless all of y'all, my first time people. Amen. Thank you, Brother Kareem. I thank y'all for coming on the scope every day. I'm at Ebenezer. Bless you, Mr. Halliger. Uh, Bible class tonight, even though it's raining, making it a bad hair day and all of that kind of stuff. I am uh, grateful to be here. Got a good word for you. Bless you naturally, Kiki. Amen. Got a good word for you at Ebenezer tonight. 199 Wallace Avenue in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. Amen. So go on my Facebook page. Um, we got a lot of things going on. I got a lot of outreaches going on that I want y'all to help me with. We working on getting things together so that we can be more connected. I even got some of the scopes on YouTube. So go over there, go to catch.me and read and catch some other things. I wish you were here too, refine this profit. So I got to get out of here. So Kim Possibles, know that you can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth you because you K-I-M keep it moving and all things are possible for us. So I love y'all. Bless y'all for being on the scope. So I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.